All right, let's get into the nitty gritty of asking for raises as a freelancer. In the past five years as a freelancer working online, I have asked for raises a whole lot of times going from $10 an hour, slowly, slowly, slowly increasing all the way up to when I was making six figures as a freelancer. And I have very luckily along the way, not once been rejected by an ask for a raise. So I'm really excited to talk about that today. Again, this is going to be a two part video series. This video is part two, where I'll break down how to ask for raises as a freelancer, the entire process, as well as what to prepare for salary chat and some of my top tips. In part one, I talked about why you should be asking for raises, when to ask for raises, as well as how much each time to ask for. So make sure to check out part one if you haven't watched that already. Hey, my name is Daya, freelancer, digital business manager, most recently entrepreneur. And as always, you can find sections on the play bar below. If you wanna to skip to a certain part of the video, your time is precious, take what you need. If you wanna watch this on 2X, I will not be offended in the least. Okay, let's dive into the video. All right, so here's the full list of what to prepare for salary reevaluation. This is essentially your little checklist. This is how you are going to structure and pull in the necessary information you need when it comes time to ask for your rates. All right, here we go. Number one all of your biggest accomplishments and goals achieved in the past X time period working with the client, I recommend coming up with at least three of the biggest, coolest things you're most proud of doing with the client. Two, list of the specific results and metrics to share from your work together, AKA pull out some numbers, pull out as many numbers as you possibly can, percentage growth, money made, revenue you added to their bottom line, any numbers to really quantify the impact that you've had so that they start thinking like, oh, so-and-so helped me make an extra $2,000 a month. Okay, and she's asking for this raise. Okay, that makes sense in terms of how much money she's helping me earn. When you can get specific, when you can share numbers, that is when you'll really be able to, yeah, be more credible to show your impact. Instead of just being like, well, I did a great job managing your Instagram. You can say, I helped you grow your Instagram followers from this to this, which is a 33% growth. On top of that, I also helped you drive 33% more sales from Instagram as a source of leads, et cetera, et cetera. You know, whenever you can pull out those numbers, the client's thinking like, oh, they have done all those things, cool. And if they're taking notes, then that's the stuff that they'll write down as well, because numbers are really, really specific and way more impactful than just using vague terminology. Like, oh, I'm doing a great job at helping you with your team. You know, what exactly are you helping them with and what results can you pull out? Three, list of trainings and development you've done in the meantime, in the time period you've been working with the client that benefits the client. So any courses, events you've attended, tool or skill upgrades you've purchased or additional training you've done. Like if you went to do training with Dipsado so that you could use that knowledge to help the client. If you have gone through like Zapier's trainings for a day or attended an event by ClickUp or something that all benefits the client because those are tools that they use. Make sure you mention that as well because that's really you going above and beyond to help the client and to develop yourself for the client specifically. Four, one to, two, one to two specific compliments for the client and your work together. So don't forget to come prepared with something nice to say or write about how much you enjoyed collaborating with them and how much you respect them for XYZ reasons. Obviously, we're not trying to kiss their butt in a way that doesn't feel genuine. We wanna be honest at the end of the day. It's always good to reiterate why you respect them, how much you enjoy your work with them so that they keep that in the back of their mind and they're in a good mood when they're reading through this email or when you're saying this verbally. Five, how your job scope has increased or changed to benefit the client. Is your job different in any way? Has your client added more and more onto your plate? Are you doing higher level tasks? Are you helping them? You know, are you taking so much initiative, being proactive and really raising your hand to help them with more things than you originally agreed upon? If yes, those are the best things you can bring to a salary reevaluation because it really shows not just your capacity to learn and adapt and be flexible and do all these higher level tasks that bring more value to the business, but it also shows that you take initiative and you're proactive. And those are soft skills that you like, clients truly, truly value. Like it is like, I, I'm speaking from a business owner's perspective, like somebody who takes initiative and thinks for me and comes up with ways for they, how they can help my, make my life easier. Those are the people I wanna promote. Those are the people I wanna pay more money to. Those are the people that I am trying to look for when I hire. So don't underestimate those things and bringing them to your salary evaluation chat. Six, 
how you plan to bring even more value in the coming six to 12 months to the client, how you can't wait to help them with X, Y, Z, help them see the future, like really help them see the future of continuing to work with you and help them imagine like the, yeah, I can't wait to have Sophie help me with the launch of my book. She's gonna be so instrumental and she's so knowledgeable about X, Y, Z. I can't imagine doing that without her, you know, help them start to see the future of, yeah, like future, future, I don't know what the end of that sentence is. Seven, the ideal time frame of the raise you are asking for. Like, for example, I'm looking to increase my rates latest by March 1st, right? Giving them a time frame so that they start to think about it more seriously rather than if you just leave it open ended because then they'll be like, oh, it's not really a priority. I don't really have to think about it right now. We'll get to it when we get to it. Give them some dates, but make sure it's not something that's like next week or in two weeks. I try to do something like at least two to three months out so that they have time and they don't feel pressured into, you know, like you're forcing them to pay more money immediately. Number eight, your ideal increase based on market and industry research. So this is what you ideally want that you think is super fair. This can be a secret number, so you don't have to tell them, or you can write it into the email itself. Like I'm looking ideally for an increase up to $42 an hour. If you already have a very specific number in mind and you think it's completely fair, you've done your research, all that good stuff, you can write it into the email. Or if you prefer, you can also just open up the conversation without giving a specific number and just see what the client is after. If you do give a number, I recommend going a little bit higher than what you're thinking, just so if there is negotiation between you and the client that, you know, you're already starting a little higher so you can negotiate down a little bit. But if you're starting with like something that, you know, you're like, okay, I guess this is fine. And then they negotiate you down even further, then you might be unhappy with it. Nine, minimum increase based on market and industry research. So the previous one is your ideal. So it's like, ideally, I'd like to make $50 an hour, right? But the minimum increase is how much you need at a minimum to want to continue working with them. This should be a secret number. If you're giving an ideal number, don't give them a minimum number because otherwise they'll just give you the minimum. If you're like, I at least want to go to 30 an hour, they'll be like, okay, I'll give you 30 an hour when secretly you wanted 40 an hour, right? So give them the ideal, but keep the minimum in your mind. This is an optional number. It kind of depends on how much you want the raise versus how much you want the client, but it's always good to know your minimum to be like, if they go below this amount, then it's not really worth it for me to work with this client. So it's kind of like your own boundary, right? It's like your money boundary. 10, finally, you need to come prepared with a good attitude and willingness to talk openly and address any feedback that they might have with this client. Okay, so those are the 10 things you should have prepared. You can write them down, make a like little bullet point list, answering all of these 10 things, this little checklist. And this is what will essentially, this is like the foundation of how you're gonna ask for the race itself. Once you've done this, it's kind of like your pre-work homework. Once you've done this, everything else should come very easily. All right, so time to ask for the raise. So let's dive into how to ask for the raise itself. So first up, before you even get around to the salary raise is that you have to ask yourself this very, very, very important question. That question is how okay are you with potentially losing this client? Okay, ask yourself this question, think about it, take your time. If the answer is, I'm okay with it. They're seriously underpaying me. It's not worth it to me anymore unless they raise my rates. Then you are going to tell them your rates are going up. You are not going to ask them. You are raising your rates as of X date and you're letting them know that this is happening. Obviously like draft it in a nicer manner, but the point here is you inform them you're not asking for permission. However, if the answer to that question, how okay are you with potentially losing the client is, I don't wanna lose them. I don't wanna risk it at all then you're going to ask them for a raise and open it up for discussion. It's very important if you are scared of losing the client and you're like, you know what, they like, cause I think a lot of times, like when I look up like salary reevaluation stuff, like when I was first starting as a freelancer, I looked up a bunch of advice and people were just like, just tell them you want this. And if they can't pay it, then that's too bad, you know? And like, it's like a certain degree, I'm like, yeah. I'm also like, yeah, but that's really harsh advice to give to somebody who's like, well, I'm depending on this client for my income, you know? And I don't really wanna be like, well, if you can't pay this, then tough luck. And then I'm out of that client who supports most of my income, right? So that's why I'm giving you the option. 
If you absolutely do not want to risk them, then you're going to ask for the raise and talk about it. So open it up for discussion, see where they're at, see how they're feeling and talk back and forth. Have an open, friendly conversation about it. If you're like, I don't care. I don't care about losing this client. If they don't give me the raise, it's not worth it. I don't depend on them for my income. Then tell them you're increasing the raise, increasing the raise, increasing your salary. And if they can't afford it, then that's just unfortunately too bad. All right, then the next step is to consider the timing of the salary reevaluation discussion very importantly. Make sure it's not like a particularly stressful time for your client that they're not dealing with a list of like 2,393 things and everyone is upset at them and there is financial stress or it's tax time or something. The best timing is probably after a successful project wraps up that you were really helpful on. So for example, as a freelance agile business manager, like I was, I like to time my raises after like really successful launches. If you watched the part one of this series, then you'll know that I was about the six month mark. I was reevaluating my salary with my earlier clients. And then towards like, once I got to a rate I was comfortable with, I was reevaluating normally every 12 months. So I would normally time my 12 month salary reevaluation talk for after successful launches. You know, there's cash flow, the client's happy, the client sees how useful I was. Bam, good timing right there. Now I normally open up the salary increase discussion over email first, maybe because like I like to give people time to think because I prefer time to think about things and not just somebody telling me verbally and then I have to react right away. I think it gives them more time to like read it and think about it rather than if I'm just like on a call like, oh, by the way, this is what I want. That's kind of like, or in my opinion, it's kind of like catching them off guard and they probably need time to like think and crunch numbers anyway. So it's less confrontational over email. Um, so I normally send the email first to say all the things that I mentioned in the previous section, right? The whole checklist. I normally like draft it into a really nice email, working together all the different things, the compliment, the, you know, my results, the metrics I've helped them generate, how much I'm looking for, when I'm looking for it, you know, opening it up for conversation. And then I add at the end that I would like to discuss it via a call in more detail to hear any thoughts or questions that they have. If I'm informing them that I'm increasing my rates instead of asking them, so telling them it's happening regardless, I always give them at least two months notice up front, at least if not three months. Because if they're unable to pay your new rates, you know, you need time to help them find someone new and retrain that person and get that person up to speed. You don't kind of want to just leave them high and dry because that's a really bad impression to leave with a client, especially if they've treated you exceptionally well and they might send you new referrals in the future, right? The salary reevaluation email template that I personally use is linked below for $7. If you want to grab that and copy and paste, it's like a template where you can fill in some of the things I mentioned in the checklist above. And it's like all pre-written as an email. There are two versions of it, one where you can ask for the salary and one where you're just informing them so you can grab that if you want for seven dollars but otherwise you can definitely just use the checklist and craft an email yourself then at my next call with the client we discuss it so once they've had time to really digest it think about it think about you know what has this person been doing for me and my business how much i appreciate them it's true they have you know done so many cool things you know, thinking back on those metrics and like numbers that they shared it's true they're awesome and at this point three things can happen here one they say yes Woohoo. Awesome. High five. High five me. <laughs> Two, they say maybe. If they say maybe, my best, best advice here is to find a compromise and to have an open discussion about it. Work with them to see what's going on, see what their hesitations are and problem solve it with the client. You know, can you increase your rates a little less than you ideally wanted for now? So negotiate and reevaluate again in six months. Can you push the salary increase back one or two months to wait for more cash flow for the business? Can you take on a little bit more responsibility and essentially promote yourself to be more valuable to the business owner to justify the higher raise? You know, really try to figure out what what is going on like for them because for sure something is going on if they're saying maybe they're like back and forth about something so have that conversation with them openly and try to see what's happening if they say no similarly try to find the underlying reason you need to know this okay ask them for feedback on what you can do better to address a raise again in the future and be as genuine as you can about asking for feedback. I know if somebody says no, it, it sometimes feels like they're like, it's very personal. It's like, what do you mean? Like, you don't think I deserve it, you know? And we start to get defensive. So I'm really encouraging you try not to get defensive, you know, come from a perspective of like, I genuinely want to help your better business better. I genuinely want to know what the feedback is so that I can do better. You know, don't, don't be salty. Essentially, you can be salty in private, but you know, you should want to know why and you should want to know how to get better. 
you know, if it's fair feedback that they are giving you and you recognize you could be doing better to deserve a raise, then work on those things seriously. Show them you're putting in the work and circle back again in three to six months and see where they're at. If they say no because financially now is a bad time, be empathetic to that, right? Like it's a stressful time for any business owner. Maybe they really do want to give you a raise, but they're just not able to. Um, so you know, come from a place of like understanding, then ask them for a date in the future to talk about this again. You know, I totally hear you. Would we be able to revisit this again in three months instead? And if you really want brownie points here, it's like step yourself into the business. How can you help the business? You know, how can you provide more value to the business so the business can make more money so that some of that money goes to a raise for you, right? Maybe it's about helping problem solve with the client. Maybe it's about offering where else you could be helping and all of that stuff so that, you know, they really see that in their time of need, you are stepping up. And when your efforts translate to more revenue for the business, they will be happy to reward you if they're a good client, if they're a good, reasonable, fair, kind client. All right, let's wrap up with a few tips for raising your rates as a freelancer. One, do it one client at a time. Don't do it across all clients at the same time because, or like at least for me, I'm very risk averse. So I'm assuming we want to play it safe. If you don't want to play it safe, you can do whatever. You're just the wild child that I don't relate to. <laughs> but I want to play it very safe when I do anything with like money and clients and all that stuff. So I normally want to test my rates slowly. I want to lower my risk as a freelancer. So I always make sure to go slow. I increase my rates with the clients that are less important important to my stability first, then slowly move all clients over to my new rates one at a time. Two, make sure when you're listing out reasons for your raise that you're listing out things that are beneficial for the client. Don't talk about how like you need a raise for a personal reason X, Y, Z, because even though that's what you might be using your raise for, it's not what the client's thinking about, right? They're thinking about what will I get out of giving this person a raise? So you want to make that thought process very easy for them by giving them reasons for why they should give you that raise. So make sure that you are listing out reasons and you're really putting yourself into the shoes of the client to be like, what are they going to get out of this? What are they going to get out of paying you more money, keeping you on the team? What else are you bringing to the table? So always make sure to think about what's in it for them. Three, track your time. This one I like to do internally because it gives me a really good understanding of how much time each client really takes. We, or maybe I'm just projecting, but like I'm not great at estimating how much time it takes me to work on specific clients' stuff because, and especially because I context switch a lot, which I'm guessing if you're starting as a freelancer, you also context switch a lot, which basically just means you're like working on one client, then you have to like take yourself out of their business and then work on a different client and then take yourself out of that client. And then, you know, like you're switching context a lot and working on a lot of clients instead of like time blocking. So track your time to figure out really which clients should be paying you more because they do take up way more time than others do. You know, all clients were not made equal. Sometimes I find that the clients that pay me the most money are the most low maintenance ever. And the high maintenance clients are the ones that are paying me like two to $300 a month. So just like be aware of that, you know, not just the time, but also the mental energy it's taking you and adjust your rates accordingly. Four, give existing clients a discount when when you're raising your rates. I like to do this because it gives existing clients this hint of like, you're getting something special because you're a current client and who doesn't like a discount and a good deal? So as an example, I might say, you know, I'm increasing my rates to $50 an hour as of X date, but seeing as you're a current client and we've worked together for so long, I'm more than happy to offer you a discounted rate of $45 an hour. They now know publicly what your rates are and that they're getting a secret private little deal. So that is a score for them. Number five, understand if someone is too cheap to pay you what you deserve, they're probably not your target audience anymore. Again, pricing is relative. What's expensive for one person is cheap to another. A solopreneur that is pre-revenue and using their own savings to start a business has a completely different budget than an established seven figure online business with a team of 30 and potentially external funding. So do your research, give context as to why you're pricing this amount. And if they're not able to match what is fair for you to be paid, then move on and find clients that make more sense for what you're trying to charge. And again, to do that low risk, you can just keep that client and look for other clients on the side. And once you have one to replace their income, then you can take them on and release this client that is no longer able to pay your rates. Obviously help them find somebody who is a better match for them and help them take over and all that stuff. Six, finally, remember that pricing is interwoven with mindset more so than anything else I have seen as a freelancer. Money mindset determines so much of how you see money, your relationship with it, of the thought process you go through when you think about charging X amount 
um, or even like, yeah, of asking for a raise. So if you notice that there is a lot of negative connotations that come up for you when you do start to think about charging more, do a little bit of homework on that. Read up on money mindset, understand where those preconceived notions come from um, because they might be hurting you and, and your relationship with money and how to dismantle those so that they don't hold you back if they are. If you're looking for help for when to ask for salary increases, how much to ask for, why you should be regularly asking for raises, then make sure to check out part one if you haven't seen that already. I'll link that in the top right corner of the video and in the description box below. All right, I hope that was useful. If this video helps you ask for a raise, let me know below because that would just make me really happy um, and I wanna cheer you on. So definitely drop a comment below. Thanks for hanging out as always and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.